Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and welcome to this video on ionization. So in this video we're going to look at the uh, definition of ionization, all the keywords involved as well. And we're also going to look at the really, really important equations to do with ionization energies as well. Uh, we're going to look at the trends, down groups and across periods. And we're also going to look at the effects, um, so what things can affect ionization energies. Uh, this video is very, very introductory, so it will just show you the, the basics uh, required for ionization. A lot more detail is required when you talk about periodicity. So there's loads of videos uh, that I've done on periodicity that will add all the kind of flesh to this. But this is a really good uh, starting place, I suppose. Okay, so the definition is crucial. So, so important. So the definition on here is the amount of energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of atoms in the gaseous state. Now we have three distinct parts here. Um, the amount of energy required to remove one mole of electrons, that's the first bit, from one mole of atoms, that's the second bit, in the gaseous state, and that's the third bit. So these terms are really, really important when you're writing definitions. You've got to literally write it word for word, just about, including these key terms, because if you don't, you can lose marks. So it's definitely worth the investment of time making sure you know your definitions. So using this definition, we can help to form an equation. It's a very common uh, exam question for them to ask. So we're going to write down um, an equation. And we're going to use, I think the first one, we're just going to use something like sodium. So if we take sodium, so let's put sodium is Na. And if we ionize it, we are trying to remove one mole of electrons. So we're going to take electrons away from this. Now, how we write this is pretty straightforward. We don't put minus electron there. We actually put the electron on the right hand side. So the electron actually sits on this side here because we're removing one electron. Now, when we remove one electron, obviously we're left with an ion, and this ion is Na. Now you can see this is exactly how the equation should be written. But there's one extra thing that we need to consider, and this is atoms in the gaseous state. So we need to add gaseous ions, uh, the, ga the gaseous state symbol to the end of these. Even though sodium at room temperature is clearly a solid, uh, we have to label it as a gas. So whenever you write these equations, you need to put gas and gas near sodium and the Na plus ion as well. We don't need to put it on the electron though, so we can just leave that. But that's really important because quite often you get two marks for this in the exam. Uh, one for actually writing the equation correctly with the right number of electrons and balanced. Uh, and the other one is also writing these state symbols. So it's really, really important that you put them, but state symbols is always gas, so it's, it's pretty easy. This is called the first ionization energy. We're removing uh, the first electron and only electron in the outer shell for sodium. Um, so, uh, and this is obviously producing one electron. We can also do the same for the second ionization energy as well. The second ionization is the removal of Again, one mole of electrons, um, but this time, because we're removing an electron from something that's already ionized in its first ionization, then we say it's removed from one mole of ions in the gaseous state. So an example of this could be calcium. So for example, let's put calcium there, Ca plus, again, gas. We're going to remove an electron, and this is going to form calcium 2 plus, which is also a gas, plus your electron. This is the second ionization um, of calcium because we've already removed an electron from calcium already to form Ca+, and now we're going to form Ca2+. So the definition is exactly the same, except we say removing electrons from one mole of ions in the gaseous state. But everything's always in the gaseous state. Okay, so uh, now we know what the equations are. We now need to look at the trend of these things as well. Now, there's two things that they said we're going to look at, which is down groups and across periods. So as we go down the group, we've got our little diagram of our periodic table here. So as we go down groups, down like that, put that as a, as a bullet point. So as we go down the group, the general trend is that the ionization energy decreases. So I'm going to put IE, for ionization energy, and that declines as we go down the group. Um, and as we go across periods, and I'll explain this a little bit in, in a minute later on, so as we go across the period, then actually the ionization energy uh, actually increases. It goes up as we go across. And again, I'll explain this 
a little bit in a bit more detail over here. Okay, so let's just put our bullet point on there just to make it neat. Right, so let's look at the effect then. So why do we have this effect here? So um, we have an effect by three different things ultimately. The first one, we can see what little charges here, these are little ions, um, is the effect of charge on the atom. So the charge obviously is the number of protons in the nucleus. And the more protons we have, the uh, bigger the attractive force between the outer electron and the positive charge in the middle. So this one is actually symbolizing, or this diagram is symbolizing, uh, the number of protons in the atom. So that has an effect. Okay, now you can see as we go across the period here, um, the number of protons increases. So therefore, the ionization energy increases as well. Um, and so that's why the ionization energy increases. So the other thing, though, because you might think, well, actually, as we go down the group, the number of protons increases as well, but the ionization energy is decreasing. Well, we actually have another force at play as we go down groups. Um, and this one is actually the distance from the nucleus has a big effect as well. So the further away your outer electron is from the shell, remember that's the electron we're moving, uh, from the nucleus in the middle, then the easier it is to remove that electron from the um, from the atom. So as, of course, as we go down the group, the atoms get significantly bigger because you're adding an extra shell of electrons as we go down. For every element we go down, so therefore the amount of energy required to remove that outer electron decreases. So this one is distance from the nucleus. There you go. Okay, so that's our distance from the nucleus there. Um, and uh, the final one is this little picture of a shield. Uh, the examiners love this word, which is shielding. Try and get it in your answers if you can, obviously in the right context. Don't just put it randomly anywhere. But uh, shielding is a really important term. And shielding is basically the similar to the distance from the nucleus, except shielding is the effect of the inner electrons uh, on the ability to lose the outer electron. So lots of inner electrons between the nucleus and the outer electron means you've got lots of shielding. And lots of shielding effectively reduces the uh, amount of energy required to remove that outer electron. So the greater the shielding, the less energy required to remove that outer electron. So the ionization energy also decreases. And this is another thing. As we go down the group, the amount of shielding increases as we go down the group. So that's an important term to talk about when you're talking about uh, ionization. So um, this is called shielding. Okay, like I say, I have got videos that look into periodicity as well. There's loads of videos on periodicity. So for the flesh, to get a little bit more flesh and to apply this to specific examples, uh, please have a look at the videos on there. Uh, but um, there we go, that's ionization in a nutshell and all in just over eight minutes. That's not too bad. That's it. Bye-bye.